This video continues our exploration of shortest path algorithms, and in particular we're going to talk about Dijkstra's algorithm. So this is also a single source shortest path algorithm. One of the things about Dijkstra's algorithm is it requires that the edges not have negative weights. So everything has to be non-negative. And Dijkstra's algorithm is a greedy algorithm, fundamentally, and that's part of why it has that restriction on there. So it's faster than Bellman Ford's, and in fact, if you do the ideal implementation, its order is V log V plus E. However, it does have this limitation, which can be significant for some graphs. So how does Dijkstra's work? Well, it starts off once again by calling that initialization, and then it creates this set S, which is empty. It also uses a priority queue and it adds all the vertices to that priority queue and the priority for them is based upon the current distance to them. So remember that init sets things up so that the start node has a distance of zero and everything else has a distance of infinity. And then we have a while loop and while the priority queue is not empty, we extract the minimum off, we add that vertex to S and then we run through everything that comes off of U that is not yet in the set S, and we call relax on it. It turns out this algorithm is actually remarkably similar to Prim's algorithm for building a minimum spanning tree, except that in Prim's algorithm, the priorities for things were given by um, given by the, the edge that was just to connect it to the part of the minimum spanning tree that had already been built. In this case, it's actually the full distance from whatever the start node is. So the algorithms are, are very similar, but it's that tweak that makes it a, a shortest path algorithm. So to make sure we understand this, let's go through and use our example graph to go through the, the details of Dijkstra's algorithm. In this case, I'm going to start off with our start vertex being index zero, and that would give us a priority queue that looks like this. Okay. One thing to note about Dijkstra's algorithm that's not very clear here, but we'll have to, to we'll make it clear in just a bit, is that when you relax things, you have to change where they are in priority queue. So while our relax did not have a call to decrease key, that winds up implicitly happening because the priority for things in the queue is the distance and relax has the ability to change those distances. So what happens? Well, obviously the first thing that we pull off the priority queue is zero because zero is less than all the infinities. I'm going to put little stars by things when they get pulled off and added into S so that we know that they have been processed and we are done with them. And then we're going to run through everything that that connects to and call relax on it. So we wind up relaxing index one to a value of three, index three to a value of one, and index four to a value of uh, two. I just noticed that I never bothered to put a weight on that edge and that's why it didn't get into my graph in the earlier videos. Okay, so that was the the first time through the while loop. We went through all of the adjacent edges and we relaxed them all. So now our priority queue has the values that we see here the one with the star has been removed from the priority queue, so it's not our min. When we remove the next one, it's going to be three because it's distance one is the smallest, okay? So what happens there? Well, we pull it off, we add it into S, and then we follow all outgoing edges. In this case, there's only one, and we uh, relax that edge. So that's the edge from three to seven, and it gets relaxed to a value of two for the fact that there's the one here plus 
the value there. That's the next pass through the while loop. Okay? Now the priority queue pulls off whatever comes next. It could be the four, it could be the seven. I actually want to, to make it the four, uh, so we'll, we'll go with that because I think it's illustrative of how the algorithm works. So it pulls off the four and we're going to add it to the set and then we go through all outgoing edges. So vertex two gets relaxed to the seven weight on this edge plus the two, which is nine. And vertex eight gets relaxed to the two here plus that two, which is four. Okay. And after our third pass through, this is the situation that we're in. I think this next pass is the one that's, that's critical for helping you to understand what's going on. We pull off the next smallest, which happens to be the seven now. There is no ambiguity. So we pull off the seven, add it to our set, and then I run through all the outgoing edges. Okay, so the edge going to six isn't all that interesting. It gets updated to seven. The edge going to eight is more interesting because it had a value of four. It now gets relaxed down to three. Here again, I want to emphasize that that relaxation has to alter the priority queue. And so we need it so that this value is smaller and that the key is more likely to be found. Yeah. Uh, at this point, once again, we could pull off the one or the eight. I'm not gonna follow this all the way through, but hopefully you can see how this is going. This is a greedy algorithm. Once we pull something off the queue, we're done. We've made the decision that that route for getting there is the shortest route. And, and it works for two reasons. One, we always pull off the thing that we can get to in the shortest distance, which means that pulling anything else off would have been a worse choice and therefore any other route to that node would have given us a larger number on the condition that all edges are non-negative. If I were to put in a negative two, this would break. So in fact, we can see that if I made this a negative two and made this a zero, okay, well then we would have gotten to the seven before the four because the seven would have had a weight of one. And then it would have chosen to make the eight a value of two, let me, yeah, negative three. So this is really clear. It would have chosen to make the, the value of eight be two for this path right here, but it would have chosen that prematurely because it's being greedy because there's a better path here that actually has a weight of negative one. Actually, I guess the negative two was perfectly sufficient because then we can get to eight with a path length of, of zero. And so Dijkstra's depends upon things being non-negative because if there's a negative value in there, you can't use the greediness that Dijkstra uses to be fast. In order to get that full performance though, because you are calling decrease key over and over again, you need to be using uh, Fibonacci heap. Uh, standard binary heaps don't have a nice ability to decrease key, but when you do, you can get this as V log V plus E, which you will note is better than what we got with Bellman Ford.